Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and I've got some new Photoshop brushes that I want to share with you guys. Um, you, some of you may be aware of my, my fur brushes that I've created, my water brushes, my foliage brushes. Well, I've been working on several different projects, but one of those projects was creating some cloud brushes. And, uh, you know, these have been kind of a long time coming. But I just finished them recently, and so I wanted to give you a little demo uh, and show you how they work. So, um, the first thing you'll see is I've got 30 brushes. I just loaded them up right here so you could see them up in the upper left. And what these brushes are, they're not, they're not just going to magically make a cloud for you. What I've created are brushes that you can use to create clouds and use them in different combinations and really experiment with them. They're going to give you some great textures, some great patterns. Um, and they'll make creating clouds, creating skies a lot easier for you. Let's start off uh, right off the bat. I'm just going to grab this first one right here. Number 325. Actually, the first thing I'd like to do is uh, let me just run through all of them and just show you kind of what they do on their own. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new layer. And I've got, uh, I'm going to make it nice and there we go. And I'm just going to show you right now. See, all that is right there. It's just I can create some nice, if you look at, think about the silhouette, some nice big kind of cumulus, summertime big puffy cloud right there, that sort of thing. Now, if I put the pressure sensitivity on, you can see it'll create a different pattern altogether. You see that? It's kind of cool. Let's go on to the next one really quickly. These kind of do the same thing. Once again. Right now, this one is really responsible for creating those nice silhouettes, the nice cloud silhouette. And keep in mind, we want to we want to use these brushes in combination with each other. Here's another nice nice pattern. I'm going to blow this up a bit so you can see it a little better. It gives it a nice. And it's really about being spontaneous. try another one. This is where it gets kind of cool. So over the tops of some of these, the brushes I just showed you, I've created brushes that will give you nice outlines. You see this? And it's nice and directional and it can create a nice kind of puffy outline. And I'll show you in just a second after we go through all of these. Watch this one. See how cool that is? Look at that. Looks like big puffy smoke. Now, when you use these in combination with each other, the effect is awesome. Really been having a lot of fun experimenting with these and um, have come up with some really great effects and very convincing clouds. I did a few clouds and showed some friends, and they thought they were actually photographs of clouds, so that worked out pretty well. And some very simple cloud lines there. So I'm just very quickly going through these just because I want to show you what they what they look like individually and you know some of them are nice and soft you know if you want a nice soft maybe it's a morning cloud or something misty now some of these have nice broken edges i can shrink this up my cats are going nuts behind me right now you know i can create nice shapes nice broken up shapes like so then you can go in with your, your uh, smear tool, your blend tool, and go in and, and push these shapes around even more. All right. Let's go on to the next one here. Very soft cloud here. See that? Very soft. Some of them have nice, the, the big thing here that I concentrated on, on a lot of these is creating really nice edges on these clouds. See how these edges have, are nice and kind of random and soft and hard all at the same time. They create some great edges and this, you know, and when, if you, if you work them right, you know, like so working them very spontaneously, you can create some really, really great skies. And that's what, that's the, that was the big my big drive behind this was trying to create a tool, cloud tools, I should call them, that will enable you to create very convincing imagery. Okay, so these cloud uh, 
Oh, look at this one. This is kind of cool. I'm going to make this a little larger. So if you, if I go nice and once again, keeping it very random, you know, it, cre it creates really great edges and I can create nice cloud shapes. Just like so. Now, one of the other things I want to stress, especially for you young artists starting out, see there, it's a nice base to, to then, you know, you can start, uh, uh, start adding, you know, sh uh, highlights and shadows. Um, for you young artists starting out, it's very important to, um, there we go, it's very important to look at reference, look at the skies, go outside, look at the clouds outside, look at how, you know, the way they're shaped look at how they how light hits them look at how they pile on top of each other look at you know all their different traits there we go and th that's kind of what i was trying to do when i actually created these brushes i was looking at clouds outside and saying okay i'm seeing some patterns out there that i see repeating for different you know different types of clouds have different repeating patterns and so i challenged myself to go in and find ways of creating that through a brush and this is kind of my this is what I've come up with, and I'm really happy with them. They've, they're really working well. And then here's one. I, I wanted to do something that felt painterly. You know, here's a, you know, I wanted some nice, you know, brushy kind of edges to it. If you wanted something that wasn't so photographic, but you wanted something kind of painterly, there you go. Look at that. Almost could be splashing water as well, you know. Here's another one. Once again, maybe it's little wispy morning clouds on the horizon like so working across the horizon and once again I'm just going through these very quickly and then I'm going to do a little demo on how we can create some really convincing clouds so just bear with me and I just want to show you some of the traits of these you know some of these clouds here see that nice edges there that's what I love about them really nice and I'm, and I'm just blowing through. I mean, imagine what, if you really sat down. These are these are some fun ones. Look at these. This gets really kind of nice and fun. And what's nice about these brushes in here is that they're directional, meaning that the, they'll follow the direction that I make them go in my, with my brush. So I can make them nice and wispy if I go nice and light, you know, on the with my touch on the screen. I can make them real big and bold, like so, if I press harder. But you see the nice, those nice textures. And look how quickly I'm just laying this in. See that? It's very cool. And very, what's nice about it is that it doesn't feel repetitive. You know, that's the one thing. I, I didn't want shapes that repeated. I wanted to make, make it feel very organic. So that was one of, the, one of my challenges. Here's another one. Very kind of nice and wispy looking cloud here. Let's do one more. Let's do another one here. See there? You know what else it's good for? Watch this. Let's just change the color. Change the color to a nice orange and look at this. All of a sudden we've got we've got fire look at that see that so it's you know be be inventive with it I, you know i was drawing with this earlier and i saw some of these shapes and i went oh man look at that we can make we can make fire with that look at that it's, a, it's very convincing very convincing fire so not just clouds but we can do all kinds of stuff let's see here we've got here we go we got here i want some a little more like something low on the horizon Whoops, went the wrong direction there. A little low on the horizon. There we go. I want to make sure I go nice and back and forth. I'll get some nice shapes this way. Like so. Let's go to the next one. This one's even thinner. See there? I'm going to make some nice wispy clouds on the horizon but the other thing you can do watch this I'm going to put my pressure sensitivity on and I'm going to uh, knock it down to 80 I'll bring it down even lower 
and you know maybe it's real high cirrus clouds now watch I'm going to do this I'm going to do a combination maybe these are really high you know ice crystal you know up in the high winds and the jet stream up above our, our heads you know you can get some nice wispy things going on and then in this last one here watch we get a nice I bring that a little bit bigger. Get some nice, nice wispiness there. See that? And also, it could make some nice water. See that? It's just, it's just a nice all-around brush. Great for clouds. Really great for clouds. This is what it's, it's what it was made for. Create another one. Once again, nice and textury. And I, and I want to reiterate, you know, these are meant to not really stand alone. They're meant to be used in conjunction with each other. Try blending them up. Use one brush with another brush. Really, you know, look for the different effects you can create. There we go. Look for all the different effects you can create. Right there, look at that. By combining different brushes. Because that's, that's how they're meant to be used. When you look at the sky and you look at clouds, it's very rare that the shapes really repeat. I mean, it's really a lot of different textures and and uh, and shapes and, and hard edges and soft edges. And so, you know, challenge yourself to, to find that in these. Here we go. Some more shapes, some more edges. You know, I really wanted to provide a nice variety in, uh, in these. Look at that. Once again, I was thinking about fire. <sniffs> Going to go up is like fire, but it's also a nice, wispy edged cloud, like so. Okay. We're almost there. Now, this one is kind of cool. This is definitely meant to be used in conjunction with the first brushes I showed you, and I'll show you how I use this one. But it gives it a nice, there's a nice effect going on there. Get a nice smoky cloud, almost like a volcano going off there, huh? Because some, some of the ash coming out, you know? Same with this one. This is a slight variant on the one I just showed you. This one kind of scatters out a little more. There, see that? Nice cloud brush. Once again, here, you can come in, you know, maybe it's uh, some stratus right there. Just kind of, the key is to really not let the shape of the brush itself come through, but to create shapes with it that are nice and spontaneous looking. A lot of fun. And you know what? You can just do whatever you want. You, this is kind of cool. Look at this. Nice and splattery. You know, and, and, and some of these clouds, especially low in the morning, there might be a little bit of a wind. It will scatter these clouds like this. But this could also be used for good foliage. You know, if you want something that's a little looser. You see there? But let's go ahead and try... So that's that's all of our brushes. That's 30 different brushes. They're, they they work great with each other. And I'm going to show you how. Let's just grab that first one just as an experiment. And I'm going to create. I'm going to turn that off. Let's make this. I just want to go for a silhouette. Let's make a nice cloud shape. I'm going to make it a little bigger. I want these shapes on the edges to be a little more bold. There we go. Now let's come down here. Maybe this one. Let me experiment. No, that's too soft. Let's, uh, here we go. I'm going to soften up a few of these edges. Go a little bigger with it. Even bigger with it. There we go. Maybe some of these clouds. 
There. It's a big cloud coming out of that soft. And let's put one more here. There. So we have a nice silhouette. Let's go ahead. Now watch what I do. I'm going to come over here. See where it says lock? I'm going to lock that. Boom. There we go. I'm going to lock that layer. So now what that means is I can't paint outside of this layer. This cloud layer that I've created, I won't be able to paint outside of it. And that's really valuable because watch. Now I can come in and uh, remember these brushes here? These ones I said were really cool to use over these. Watch what happens. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go a little, I'm going to go grab my blue color, but I'm going to go a little warmer and make it a little darker and watch what I do. This is so cool. Watch this. Following the contours, the shapes that I just created. Look at this. I'm creating the shadow side of this cloud. It's not painting outside. There we go. It's not painting outside of that cloud silhouette. There. See that? I'm going to come back in here and make this nice and large. Soften up some of these, hit some of these edges and darken them. Come back to our brush there so we can get this. Look at that. Already it feels pretty cool and we haven't even, we're only two brushes into it. Two layers, two colors. Look at that. Let's come back to this brush again, make it bigger. There. Now let's grab a lighter color. Let's uh let's just brighten that up. And I'm gonna grab that brush again. And now look, I'm painting the lighter side of the cloud. You know, the side that's catching light. I'm imagining the sun off to the left. You know? Look at that. It's catching light. And very, very simply done. I'm just throwing on some brush strokes. This is everything so set with it in kind of the normal mode. All right. Now watch this. Now I'm going to grab this brush on the left here. Kind of makes... Oh, we're on the, it makes kind of that shape. Let me get rid of that. But watch, I'm going to come up here to my mode, and I'm going to come down to Color Dodge. I'm going to knock that down to about 54%. Make it nice and warm. Now watch what I do. I'm going to knock the size down a little bit. Now, you know how clouds will really get hot on the edges, right? Well, I'm just going to get it really... Now pick out areas that are going to really catch some light. Following the form, thinking about the form of that cloud, and look what's happening. All of a sudden we're getting something that really, really starts to pop and really feels like a cloud, a real kind of big thunderhead, a cumulus cloud. Now sometimes, if you've noticed in the summer, especially if the cloud is really backlit, Get a few in here. There we go. You'll get a little rim lighting on it. So let's do some of that. Let's do some rim lighting. Now remember, this thing is locked, so I can't paint outside the, the silhouette, the edge of the silhouette. So that works really great for doing this. See how I'm adding this rim lighting on here? Look at that. We're going to do the same thing here. Look at that cloud. It's really, really cool. Now let's add it. Let's create another layer on top. Let's put a layer on top. And let's, uh, I'm going to grab this color, go a little darker with it. Let's grab another brush. Let's grab, um, hmm. Let's grab this brush just for the heck of it. See what we can do with it. Let's do some wispy clouds down, down below. 
Whoops, I'm still on color dodge. I don't want that. I want it on normal. Let me put a new layer. There we go. Look at this. Getting some really neat kind of wispy clouds there. Oh, I want to knock that opacity up. There we go. See that? Do another one here. There, see that? You know, it's a different type of cloud in the foreground. You know, I've seen these clouds a hundred times, a thousand times, you know, here in Florida looking at the skies and and whatnot. You know, a big summer storm coming in. But see that, you know, just, I'm not having to worry about creating all these textures. The brush is doing it for me. The biggest thing I got to worry about is making sure I'm paying attention to shape, being very spontaneous. Like, I, let's make a big one. I'm going to go really big with it, like it's in the foreground here. Yeah, done very quickly. Actually, let's vary it up. Let's go ahead and grab. Maybe we, we got some brighter ones up here. Bring the size down. See that? Look how quickly we've created this. I'm going to go ahead and put a layer on top. Let's give it a little atmospheric perspective. You know, there might be a little dust, a little warmth in the air. So I just created a, a layer between the, our foreground clouds and the, the background big cumulus cloud. And I'm going to grab my gradient tool, which is right under the, the uh, paint bucket tool. And I'm going to do a gradient straight up. See how we get some nice warmth? There. See that? Now I'm going to do one right over the top. There. So we got, you know, a, a little bit of atmosphere happening in there. So anyway, so that's, those are the cumulus clouds. And that's all done just by using, you know, playing with the modes. Let me come back to my brush. Playing with the modes up here and, you know, layering different brushes over each other. They work really, really well. Let's, uh, let's just, for the heck of it, let's just try another one. So uh, let's say we want to do something maybe a little soft. Maybe something in here. Come down there. There we go. You know, maybe these are nice puffy afternoon clouds. You know, a little softer. Actually, you know, clouds that have soft edges like this tend to be, you know, maybe in the morning. Something like that. Let's go a little bigger. Ooh, too big. There we go. Thinking about perspective. I want the clouds to kind of recede into the distance. So I'm going to go smaller and smaller. See? I'm going very, very quickly. Very quickly. Don't worry about if they overlap with each other. Go a little smaller. As I as I go back into the distance, I make the brush smaller. You know, I want the size to recede as well. Oops, there we go. See how spontaneous I'm keeping this? I'm going very, very quickly. Not worrying too much about it. Go a little smaller with that brush. As the clouds get further and further away, they get smaller and smaller. And they're going to tend to overlap each other a little bit more as well. But 
once again, I want to reiterate, you know, use, use reference. I'm doing this out of my head, but I always, I'm always looking at reference. I'm taking photos. I'm drawing from life, I'm trying to build up that, that thing that I'm always talking about, that visual library. The more you draw from life, the more you look at what, how the world really works, the better off you're going to be as an artist. You'll build up a, a library of images and form and light and how light works on form and all of that kind of stuff. But see how these clouds just kind of recede into the distance? Let's go ahead and lock those, lock that up again. Go back to the blue, go a little dark. Let's go big. Bigger, bigger, bigger. There we go. I'm going to knock that opacity down. Now look, we can get a nice shadow layer underneath these clouds. We can play with value and how, you know, the softness of them. Maybe they're a little dark on this side. See so? See that? Look at that. Very quickly. And because I got those layers locked, it doesn't go outside the edges of those clouds. So now I can get really spontaneous with it. Just draw, draw, draw. And really just, just see where it goes. I mean, there's no such thing as an accident. They can be, you know, they can be happy little accidents, as my hero Bob Ross used to say. You know, it's this is your world. This is your universe. You create it. So just have some fun with it. And that's what I try to do there. See that those clouds just recede right in the background. Now let's go brighter. Let's go a little brighter. Hit some of these. These edges here. There we go. Maybe along that edge. There's a little brighter there. Maybe a little brighter there. And as we go back into the distance, maybe they're not, they don't go quite as bright. Now as things recede, the values come together. The darks don't quite, aren't quite as dark and the lights aren't quite as light. You see? So now let's do our same thing. Let's create a layer on top and create, you know, grab a little warmth right there and grab our gradient tool and just come up. Look at that. Those clouds recede right into the distance. So this is what I'm talking about. Just have some fun. Look at your reference. I've got a, a 30 different brushes that you can sit down and just have some fun with. It's a, it's a blast. I've really enjoyed making these brushes and I've really enjoyed the images that I can create with them. Um, you know, if you look at my YouTube channel, I've created some brushes there. Um, uh, there's, I mean, uh, some Im cloud images there. And I've also on my website, creatureartteacher.com, these brushes are available and uh, you can see the different images that I've created with them, along with, you know, my water brushes and my foliage brushes, my fur brushes. There's a lot of different things there that will enable you to create those types of textures, whether it's fur or foliage or clouds or water a lot more easily so that you don't have to spend all that time noodling and you can get onto the, you know, the, the really fun meaty stuff. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope these brushes really bring you some joy and until next time, have some fun painting clouds. I'll talk to you later. Bye.